Oh, that's not too bad. Yes. This week, our budget pole barn build is getting a major upgrade. We're finally building barn doors. Per usual, we'll share all the materials used and the build cost. Let's get started. This door design is gonna be pretty basic. This is a rough sketch of what I drew right here. There's gonna be two of these, one pair on the front and one pair on the back. And I just did a rough measurement of our door width. And I want about an inch overhang on each side when these things are fully closed and a couple inches of clearance off the ground. So. Each section is going to be 112 inches tall by 88 inches wide. So I'm going to just write this up here. That way I can reference it. And this is my look I'm going for. This is pretty much going to be the plywood base. I figured this would hold it square and give it some wind blockage since it's going to be a solid back piece. Now what we're going to do is cut our two by sixes and pretty much make a frame around this. We'll 45 the ends and glue and screw everything down to hold this together. Now we're gonna get this two by six frame screwed together. One quick tip, when you're cutting your miters for your ends on your top and bottom, for instance, like a picture frame or a door frame if you're making a barn door, clamp the two pieces together and cut them at the same time. Even though you draw a line on there, a 45 and cut one at a time, it's so hard to get it perfect and it throws the square off really easy if it's not. This method worked out pretty good with assembling because it allowed me to use the plywood to make sure my frame box was square. This half of the front door squared up perfect. It's super even. Couldn't ask for anything better. The plywood on the frame worked out perfect. But I also didn't realize the sheer size of these things. We're gonna build the second half, hopefully slide this one back and we'll give us enough room. Knock out the second one, and we might have to hang these things. Oh, that's not too bad. Ooh. Ooh. And drop, one, two, three, drop. All right, for the bottom section of the door, we're gonna use some corrugated metal that I have left over from the tree house. Now this is some older stuff, so it does have some patina on it. So I'm gonna cut this up in four foot strips. Tape measure hold right there. You got it? Yeah. 77 and an eighth. Do you remember that? Yeah. That came out perfect. Now we gotta put the 10 on the other half. And then we're gonna use some fence pickets for the top section. So those will either be pressure treated or cedar. I gotta run Home Depot and still get those. I'm not sure uh, which one's gonna grab yet, depending on cost. So we'll see just how that works out numbers wise. But yeah, I love how this is coming out and it's gonna look awesome with that top tied in.
The bottom half of the doors are complete. The reclaimed tin worked out perfect. I love how it looks. So I'm moving on to the top part. For the tops, I'm gonna to do kind of a board and batten look. For that, we're gonna use these pressure treated fence pickets. Couple reasons for this, they're, they're pressure treated, they last a long time um, outdoors, and they're also super cheap material to use. So we're gonna cut these up to length, put them all vertical, and I know they're gonna eventually shrink up because they're pressure treated. So we're gonna go ahead and stain this plywood with the stain that we're gonna use on the entire door. This is an oil base stain from uh, Sherman Williams. It's super good stuff, so I'm gonna get this plywood stained, and that way when those shrink up, it won't really be really obvious that there's plywood behind there and the upper portions will be done. See, now we just gotta set them just like Boom. Yeah, come on, put your paintbrush in and drop them. Just like that. So the two front doors complete. I got half of one stained, and then I realized there's no point in staining it now. Then I gotta hang it up when it's all wet. So we'll pause on the staining or the finishing, and do that when it's hanging in the air. Right now, let's get this hardware figured out. So this right here is a box rail. This piece is 12 feet long. This mounts onto the barn above the barn door. And then this wheel track right here slides inside this box rail. It has a hanging carriage bolt that slides through your door mount. Then you can see on the back side, you have a jam nut set up. So you have one nut on the bottom and one nut on top. That way it is adjustable. So right now I'm going to figure out how high I need to mount this box rail right here above where I want the door placement. So the easiest way I'm going to figure this out is just put the mount, the door mount on the door where it's going to go. And I'm going to slide my box rail down to the mount. And you're going to want a little bit of play in this. You can adjust your door to make sure it's level. So right now to the bottom of my box rail to where I want my door to be just above two inches. Now we're gonna hang our box rail. We're using 12 foot sticks of that. So it should use one stick per door. And then we're gonna use four of these box rail hangers per side. Per my measurements, wherever we mount this, the top of our barn doors will hang about six inches below this hole. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna find the center on this door, get our measurements out and hang these box rail. We got the first box roll up. Now for the hard part is to get these doors moved out to the barn. Um, probably just guessing they're about 300 pounds each. They feel super heavy. So what I did, I attached an extra bracket and this is the box rail bracket for the pulley. So I bolted this on with a couple bolts. I'm gonna put a ratchet strap right here and see if we can move this thing with a tractor. Fingers crossed. Seems pretty secure. I'm hoping this will allow me to hang this thing by myself as well.
Wow, I can't believe that just went that smooth. We got the first door up. Let's get the box rail hung on the other one and close the front of this thing off. The front doors were not perfect. So happy with how they're hanging. Now we're back in the shop to cut all this material again and make the rears. Yeah, I put a little extra on this one. All four doors are now complete. Now it's time to hang up the rear box rail. For that, once again, we're using these box rail hangers. These are pretty cool, uh, pretty flexible to hang these. What I did on the front side, I hung one on the far end and then I actually took the box rail from the ground, slid it in through this side and then just picked it up like a seesaw and attached the other end, leveled it out and then attached the center ones. And to attach it, I'm using some 3 8 lag screws. These are three inches long here. This will go through the two ply header I have. And then on the two ply header where I do have some vertical supports tied into the top truss, I'm gonna use these longer lag screws to go through the two ply and hit that vertical support just for some extra insurance on the hanging strength. So now we're just gonna measure out the header on the back side and get the center marks and locations for each box rail.
something that Super excited with how these doors came out. We finally have a barn that is closed in from the wind. Now this project did take about twice as long as planned and the expense of it was a little high. We're right around $1,100 when all finished. I'll break that down completely in the description below and link all the products used. The box rail and all the door hardware was a little bit pricey, but I'm sure it'll last for years to come. The last thing I have left to do is make some cool handles for the doors, but I just didn't have time in this video. If you have any questions about any of these products used or how I installed them, please don't be afraid to ask. I love answering you guys questions and helping out where i can and when i can thank you guys for following another project and we will see you next week for another build